Hey everyone, my name is Sarah LaVon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am currently standing in our physiologic birth space where I train nurses from all over technically the world, mostly the United States and Canada. And before we tore down from this training, I wanted to give you a little preview into that training with some information that is specific to you and things you can be doing related to positioning your body throughout labor to hopefully help you have a faster, easier labor. But before I do that, make sure you subscribe down below, give it a like, share it with a friend, and then let's get moving. Before I show you some ways that you can move in your pregnancy and throughout your labor and birth, we have to talk about why do we care that you move? First of all, let's talk about pain control, right? When I'm in pain, what's my natural instinct? Am I like this all the time? Yes, but what do they even say for cramps? Is that movement is good, it helps oxygenate the body. And so when we're changing positions in labor, there will be different positions that you try or you move in a certain way or you lift your leg up or you lean however, that help you feel better during labor. So movement in labor is super helpful for coping. And in fact, I talk all about different positions specific for labor comfort in my coping with labor class. So make sure you check that out down below. It's literally right down below that you can click on there and purchase that class for your learning. So pain control is the first thing, but I think a lot of times when we think about labor, we think about pain and really, when we're thinking about labor, I want you to also transition into the thought that labor, the goal of labor is to bring the baby out, right? And my guess would be that most of you are looking at having a vaginal birth, and if that's the case, positions and movement in labor helps get the baby through the pelvis. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I have my baby here, and then I also have my pelvis. Our pelvis sits right in here, it is bone, it does move. Okay, so that's also one way that helps the body accommodate the baby through. But when we move our bodies, what happens is it helps actually move the pelvis. So for instance, if we're trying to get the baby into the pelvis, and by in I mean through this hole, down and out, so the vagina would be right about here, what has to happen is this baby actually has to fit into the pelvis and then rotate down and out. Now mind you, that's like a kind of a tight squeeze in there. And so it kind of has to like pinball its way through, rotating and twisting and tucking and doing all the things that it knows how to do. But we want to help it by positioning our body in a way that feels good, which is a point of position changes, but then also create space being like, come on in baby, we're right here, there's so much space for your head. And then baby's like, oh, easy, boom, all of a sudden I have more space than I did when I was in this abdomen. So they find their way in and then throughout labor, they're gonna kind of twist and turn. Now that twist and turn can be helped through your position changes and particularly your movement. So I will say, even if you plan on getting an epidural, that is perfectly fine, totally up to you. But even if you have one, I think a lot of times we think we get an epidural and you just like lay there waiting for the baby to come out. No, no, no. If we wanna set your body up for a faster labor and for a labor that helps this baby navigate through the pelvis and give you an even better chance for a vaginal birth, we gotta keep you moving and use different positions for that. So one of the things that we do here at Bundle Birth, and Bundle Birth is my company, is I train labor and delivery nurses. I have a class called Physiologic Birth. So if you know a labor and delivery nurse, send them our way because we wanna set them up to know how to best help you in labor go through the physiologic process, meaning helping your body do everything it knows how to do to get this baby out. And we have two tools for them and then also for you. One of them is this position guide. So I think I was actually talking to my assistant who is not a birth person, who has never had a baby, who is not a nurse. And she was like, honestly, when I'm learning about these positions, I would be very intimidated looking at the position guide and thinking like, what do I do? And am I just waiting for my nurse to remind me to change positions? And this is where I want you to have as much control over your labor and birth experience as possible. And one of the ways you can do that is by advocating for yourself, and I have a video specifically on that that I can link down below all about your rights as a patient, and then also asking your nurses to help you be proactive about helping this baby through the pelvis by using different positions. And so this also could be a really good nurse gift. This can be something you can purchase to give you ideas for your labor and birth, knowing that there are 
so many different things that you can be doing to help this baby through. And I'm gonna show you some basics to get you going, okay? But the idea is that one, a lot of times you see that many positions and you're like, ah, oh, I'm intimidated, what do I do, okay? And where I would start is your instinct is first. If you have watched any of my videos, I talk about instinct all the time that we wanna get in tune with our body. What sensations are you having? And if naturally you kind of start rocking back and forth and that feels good to you, then do it. Your body is going to give you some signals where it's like, ooh, I feel like doing this. Then do it because you actually may be moving in a way that gets baby off of a hip, maybe it's banging into something, right? That to get the baby to go, whoop, oh, I found my way into the pelvis. One of the perfect examples of this, if you've seen my Engage the Baby videos, is the idea of tucking your pelvis. So when you tuck the pelvis, it opens up this hole. So if you look above, that, it, that from this way, you don't see the hole, whereas once I tuck the pelvis, it creates an extra hole. So I'm here and then I tuck and all of a sudden baby can dip into that pelvis a little bit easier. But you're not gonna know what's happening with your pelvis inside and you actually don't really need to know, to be honest. But instead, what I want you to think about is, ooh, does it feel better to tuck forward and sort of like hump the air like this and pinch your booty cheeks? Or does it feel better to like rock back and forth, right? Do I feel tension anywhere? And if I do, maybe it feels good to lean over and to get down here and sort of like stretch out my back. I know for me, I'm like, ooh, my lower back is so tense. I'm like, I think I need this position. Maybe I feel some tension in my legs and stretching that out. Anytime you create motion, it creates lotion for your joints, for the pelvis, for the baby to be able to slip and slide down and out. So your instinct related to positions is everything. But let's say you get an epidural, right? And you're like, well, now I have no instinct. Oh my gosh, like, oh no, not oh no, no big deal, okay? The idea with position changes is, we want your body moving regularly, all right? And there's different organizations that give different recommendations for how frequently we should change your positions. And by that, I mean lay left side, lay right side, open your leg, wedge your hip, do any kind of variation in positions. And again, that's why I put together the position guide to make it really easy for you and also give you some creative ideas of how to do this. But the goal would be regularly. My bundle birth suggestion is gonna be about every 30 minutes to an hour, at an hour mark, and this is a great tip for partners, that if you're sort of like, say your partner is sleeping, the pregnant person is sleeping, and you're trying to pay attention and like help advocate, I will say from a nurse's perspective that you have more than one patient most of the time, you're running from room to room, and easily you're like, wait, oh my gosh, it's been an hour, I just was in there like five seconds ago. And so if you can sort of help to either call the nurse, you can ask them and say, hey, do you want us to call you when we wanna change positions? Or are you gonna come back? How do we wanna strategize this so we can work together? And then usually my guess would be that they're gonna say like, well, I'll come back and I'll help you. But if it's been an hour, then it's time to make a position change. And now that could be laying on a side to getting out of bed if you don't have an epidural. Now with an epidural, you're not gonna have weight bearing, so you kinda like fall over if you got out of bed. Please don't get out of bed with an epidural unless you have a walking epidural. Whole other YouTube video slash my childbirth class. But for that, even if you're laying on your side, to do like a little wedge, and I'll show you this when I do side lying positions, that if you're there and you're like, oh, my nurse isn't answering, or like, I don't know what to do, just go from one side and then a little shift. And those little shifts are gonna create enough little bit of wiggle in the pelvis to be like, for baby, to help that baby be set up to navigate down and out. And ultimately, that's gonna help speed up your labor. I was talking to my best friend who was here for the physiologic birth class yesterday. She was at work helping a patient and this patient had everything against her. She had been laboring for a long time. Her cervix got stuck at six centimeters and she palpated the abdomen. I was like, what's the position of this baby? And she said it was ROP. If you haven't seen my OP or sunny side up or back labor videos, I have three on that. So check that out because all of this sort of relates. And she said, this baby's OP. And I said, okay, so knowing the pelvis, we gotta get her moving and we gotta use gravity to our advantage, which leads me into my first type of position, okay? And so if you don't have an epidural, especially in early labor, if you are having contractions and you are uncomfortable and you have the energy because we're balancing rest and activity, we gotta get you upright. 
okay? Even with an induction. I know for me with my induction patients, the moment they start feeling pain, I'm like, we're up and we're at them and we're gonna get things moving by standing. So any upright position that could be standing and leaning. And of course, we're always gonna sort of like add some movement, right? Cause that movement is gonna help to rotate the baby through. If that doesn't feel good, don't stress out about it, okay? You, if it feels better to just, right? We're releasing all the tension, moving our hips or holding still. And then when the contraction's over, back to our movement, right? Thinking motion is lotion, okay? And that movement could be circles, figure eight, side to side, bounce, bounce, whatever feels good, okay? But any kind of upright position, which leads me into squat positions. So our squat positions, you're definitely gonna wanna anchor yourself on something. Again, this is not with an epidural once you're, once you're or either you're at home or you're early in the hospital, early induction. This helps open up the top part of the pelvis which is exactly what we want while we're trying to get baby in. Once baby's in, then we wanna lock and load them. And then once they're low and we're pushing, we wanna open up the bottom part and create all the space for them to just like bloop, come out. And all of that can be accomplished through different position changes and strategic position changes. This is what I would say that like you ask your nurse help for because this is literally an eight hour class and hopefully they've been to my class and ask them, are you a bundle bird nurse? Have you been to this training? Can you help me with strategic position changes to help me get this baby through my pelvis and set me up for success, okay? Now with that, they can help, but you are the laboring person. So if you're like, I feel like I have to squat and I know you said I don't need to squat, but like, oh my gosh, I have to squat. It helps with comfort. Your instinct is key. That's number one. And then this squatting position helps you so you're not weight bearing everything. You wanna lean somewhere or hold on and brace yourself so you don't fall over, right? And eventually your ankles are probably gonna get tired so you might wanna like squat during the contraction if that feels good. And then come up between and kind of wait. <sighs> rest your body. You could even like lay on the bed and remember the hospital bed comes up and down. So you could bring it up to a place where you're a little higher rather than leaning over. Although for me, this feels really good on my lower back. So I'm going to stay here. Okay. And then you're rocking and rolling. And then when the contraction comes, Ooh, it feels better. I'm going to go back down into a squat. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to cope. Your partner, your doula can rub on your back. They can help with any kind of counter pressure down here. They can rub your head, your shoulders. You can kind of leave all your goodies here, your essential oils, your little water bottle that you're sipping on or whatever it may be. Rock and roll into a squat position, coming back up in between if needed. Both of those are considered upright positions and anything upright is going to use gravity to try to help this baby down and out, which is exactly what we want. So one of the things is I think sometimes you hear that you have to be upright during labor and that upright position is awesome. But also you're in labor for a really long time sometimes and it can be exhausting to be in labor that long, okay? So I wanna just assure you this baby can come out of you if you were practically laying upside down and please don't do that because the strength of the contraction pushes the baby this direction. It doesn't push it back up, it pushes it down and out. So even if I'm laying flat, which don't lay flat or you might pass out, even if I'm laying on my side, right? And I'm like, oh, I don't have gravity. I chose to get an epidural and now I'm stressed about it. Please hear me now, there is no reason to be stressed. Babies come out all the time while laying the entire time because of X, Y, Z number of million reasons, okay? Because the uterus is gonna push the baby that way. But just because you're laying down, are you off the hook for position changes? Absolutely not. And we can still create motion in the pelvis. We can still open the pelvis in different ways so that we can kind of help the baby navigate and give the baby the best chance of making their way through the pelvis. Another option I have for you, whether you have an epidural or not, and I wanna remind you, if you don't have an epidural, I think people obsess about like walking their, their self into labor or like having to be upright the whole time. You need to rest especially if you can, I'm like, there will come a time in your labor without an epidural where you are like desperate to rest, okay? And so the more rested you go into labor, the better. So whether this is a couch or a bed, this is a massage table we happen to have lingering around for this training, right? Or this is your hospital bed. The first one I'm gonna show you slash talk about is a side lying position. So this is where, if you're in the hospital, one of my biggest tips for you is to absolutely, every time you have a new nurse, that you ask for more pillows. Because pillows you can use 
for all sorts of positioning techniques. I only have one here and I'm like, what am I gonna do with myself, right? Whereas I could put four pillows between my legs and open my pelvis nicely. The other thing I have behind here is a peanut ball and I have two peanut ball videos that you can check out where I talk about how to use a peanut ball. So I'm not gonna use them necessarily in this one, but if I'm laying on my side, I wanna be relaxed. And so in a sideline position, you can think about, one, if your legs are straight, is that super comfortable? No, but what if we bent a leg up and kind of turned on my belly this way? When I'm here, if I listen to my instinct, I'm like, my arm is super smushed, so what can I do? I can put my arm behind me and all of a sudden, I am like so much more comfortable, right? And this position is gonna help twist the pelvis and help get baby into position. I use this one almost every labor with my clients, okay? Now mind you, there's so many variations and there's no right or wrong way to this. So if you wanna open, throw some pillows between your legs. If you wanna use the stirrup in the hospital bed, put your leg in the hospital bed stirrup, okay? To kind of keep things open. This is where, and remember when I said, like if your nurse doesn't come back, just a little variation. If you're laying on your side and you're like, I've been here like this with a pillow between my legs, I'll do it. Pretend like I have a pillow here for my head, right? And like this has been a lot. All I would say is, is just, what if we did this? That little shift completely changes the dimensions of the pelvis to help the baby through. Now partners, get there, do some booty massage and get in there to soften things out, help with that touch and that oxytocin to help stimulate contractions. And then you can also do a little wiggle action, right? Especially if we're dealing with, we gotta rotate the baby or the position of the baby isn't the best. Somebody tells you that, motion is lotion. And so you wanna kinda get some movement. This is where a peanut ball is really nice because they allow for some rocking, okay? And then if you've been on this side for a minute, flip sides. And now I'm on my other side and the gravity of the baby's head is gonna pull the baby in different ways. I open, I close, I'm all around trying to get this baby in with or without an epidural. Sideline positions and then when you're here, once you're in the position, sleep. There's no need for you to be like, okay, unless you're coping, obviously, right? But especially if you have an epidural, like hang out and chill, get a little nap in. And then 30 to 45 minutes later, we're doing a little variation turn, flip side to side. And then you have one more option for positions, right? So we've talked about upright squatting, but even then I will say upright for a, like even with an epidural, you can sit up like this, right? The foot of the bed, goes down a little bit, not quite this down, but your legs would probably be about like this. So you're in more of like a squatting position, even with an epidural, and that's gonna change the variations of the pelvis, helping you gravity to bring the baby down. I will say, I, I would recommend maybe not being in the squatting position for, for with an epidural for more than about 30 minutes, because you need that circulation in your pelvic pelvis, on your pelvic floor, on your cervix, to help that cervix so that it can dilate but getting upright and even just varying left, right, up, side, squat, leg this way, crooked, all around, that all of those different movements are gonna change the pelvis a little bit and help the baby through to speed up your labor and make it a little easier. And then the last option I have for you is a hands and knees position. I think a lot of times what I find in hospitals is that nurses and providers are intimidated by hands and knees with an epidural. And that's where I will say that depending on how heavy your epidural is, you may need to advocate for this a little bit, but I've seen many people with epidurals still get in hands and knees. And why is hands and knees so great? Because it allows for, where's my pelvis? Mobility of the sacrum, the other place that moves. So it moves like that at the pubic symphysis in the front, but also the sacrum moves to make room for the baby, right? And if you're stuck on your back, there's no movement of that sacrum. So when you flip over, this sacrum can move exactly like it needs to, all right? Now I will say hands and knees is more exhausting than a laying position but it can be really helpful to protect the pelvic floor, help rotate the baby if you have a sunny side up baby, and then also allow for more mobility. So what do you do? You get on all fours. Now, if there's the head of the bed, the head of the bed can come up, and I've seen people lean over the back parts of the bed, so they're rocking. You could put a peanut ball or tuck a million pillows between your legs, because we want you, we want you doing the least amount of work possible. So you're not holding everything back and trying to hold a certain position. We want you surrendered into that position. So ask your nurse for more pillows, ask them for a peanut ball or whatever other kind of little tucks and turns 
If you're uncomfortable, let them know because frequently I would walk in and I'd see people like this in the hospital and be like, are you comfortable? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, you don't look very comfortable. And next thing you know, you throw a pillow behind your neck, you straighten things out. And next thing you know, you're like, oh my God, I'm actually really comfortable now. So make sure that whatever position that you're in, you're in a place of comfort. If it feels good to lean over and put your neck down and rock back and forth, do it. All of that is gonna help your baby get in the right position. So hands and knees positions are gonna be anything where you're leaning forward, okay? Where you're on your knees. Now my wrists are gonna get sore pretty quickly, so throwing a peanut ball here or in front of me to lean on, so I, or even a birth ball, so I can just surrender over, that can be really helpful. Otherwise, I can do some cat cows, I can twist my pelvis all around, and then I can lean over the top of the bed, whatever kind of position that feels good. Now sometimes you're like, I have this weird sensation and I don't even know what's happening, but I gotta get my one leg up. And so that's your instinct working for you. That's exactly what we want. And it may look weird and the nurse might walk in and be like, what are you doing? And you're like, you know what? I'm doing what I gotta do because I'm listening to this body and I'm doing all the amazing work to help this baby get out of my pelvis a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. Moral of the story is move your body. Remember, motion is lotion. If you are needing help with this, get yourself a position guide, take my coping with labor class, and ultimately listen to your body, keeping things moving, balancing your rest and your activity, trusting that the process knows what to do. And there is some things that you can control along the way that are really simple and actually might be kind of fun and make for a good story. Remember that time that I had my leg on the wall? I actually have a picture on my Instagram of this girl with like her leg on the side railing, was like rocking back and forth. I'm like, girl, you do you, okay? Whatever it takes to get this baby out, do it. No one thinks you're weird. Your instinct is so important in this process. Thanks everyone for being with me here today. If you want more from me, I have so many things going on. I have all sorts of classes that you can check out down below in the description box on my website. Or if you click down below, they're right there for you to purchase. And then pick yourself up a position guide. If you wanna get your nurse a really cool gift, we have a pocket position guide available to her or him. And then make sure you subscribe down below. Follow me over on Bundle Birth at Instagram. You can learn all sorts of other little things along the way. And then until next time, remember that motion is lotion and don't forget to flex and flow and I will see you soon.